I love hollow flies. Normally tie them with bucktail. However, this guy lets you fish with a floating line and sinks better than bucktail. It's also great for smaller patterns. It's a good way to learn the hollow fly technique and takes markers. Here we go. Okay, so start your thread and make a thread base over a little over half the hook shank. Just snip off your thread and work the thread down. Just don't go too far like I do here. I usually tie my craft for hollow flies in three parts. We're starting with the tail part. Here are a few notes on craft fur. Just grab the craft fur and comb out a section that's the right size for your fly. If you're bald or going to get there, then you need to perfect the combing technique so you can look your best later. For tails, I like sparser but not too sparse. Cut the tail low, making sure to get the under fur. This is what the clump will look like. Notice the under fur side since you will leave this in with either the last and or second to last clump of craft fur on the fly. Use a comb to get all of the under fur out. No, this is not an infomercial for personal grooming. You can continue to stroke out any longer fibers until you have your piece. It has now magically turned white here. Now use your hook shank to measure out the length of the piece and then cut it. Basically it comes down to how long you want the finished fly to be. Give your thread a twist to tighten it up and place the end of the craft fur piece on top. Now wrap it down so that it stays on top of the shank. Wrap three strands of lateral line material, which is the most important flash I use, around the thread and tie it down just like you did with the tail. Cut the flash just a little bit past the tail now. Give the tail a nice caressing and adjust the length if necessary. Our old friend Zappagap goes on top of the wraps now. Go ahead and wrap up the shank. Give the thread a touch to get rid of any wet Zappagap. Now measure the next clump of craft fur so that it will end up past the halfway mark of your tail. With this smaller version of the fly, I prepare the craft fur just like the tail, but on larger patterns I leave the under fur in like I do for the final clump. Place the craft fur on top with the tips pointing forward and spin your thread. Now make a couple wraps and spin the craft fur with a controlled spin 360 degrees. Then make some more wraps to tighten it down. When you're done, you can cut off the tag end or just trim it around so that it's consistently round. You can cover this with thread wraps, but I'm much too lazy for this. And like a flabby yet skinny guy's body, it'll be concealed underneath. Okay, so this is your first hollow tie. You can use an empty pen to push the fibers back, but I use my fingers so that I can continue to distribute the fibers when I push them back. To do this, make a triangle with your fingers or simply pull the fibers back until you like how they look. This next step is the key to hollow tying or reverse tying. Make a thread dam by wrapping immediately in front of the fibers. Do this by making even wraps. The reason craft fur is a good place to start with this technique is because it lays back much easier than a fiber like bucktail. It really doesn't take much for this. Also, make sure to give the fly gratuitous strokes and pets, just because it feels right. Now for some more flash. Repeat the step that you did on the tail with four or more strands of flash. With this group of flash, try to move the strands onto both sides a bit more instead of directly over the top. When they look good, cut them off at the same place as your other flash. If 
After this, wrap forward a bit, but leave a bit of room for your last thread dam, since you can screw everything up here if you crowd the eye. I've never done that myself, but I hear it makes you want to kick someone in the groin. Measure out your clump with the end of her still in it. Then repeat what you just did on the middle section. You want the under fur so that the fly is denser at the front. This is really the key to these flies. You start from dense and go to limp and movable. Remember this fly is not a simple profile fly. It should jump back and forth in the water with each strip and pause as long as the cadence is not too quick. Back to the matter at hand. Make sure to tighten down the material very well here. Also make sure that the tag ends don't cover the middle portion of craft fur. They should stop before the middle section and not compress it at all. Get everything situated and pull the fibers back. Then make a sharp pull on the thread to bring it forward. Commence your dam work, that is the thread dam work. Remember, never wrap over the fibers with these flies, otherwise this is not a hollow fly, and we're actually trying to tie a hollow fly. I like to wrap on top and bottom so that the thread wraps are distributed evenly and the head is consistent on both sides and top and bottom. Whip finish this guy. and pull the thread to tighten it down. Give the thread a snip. Gratuitous stroking. That's a good fly. Now give the fly a dollop of zappa gap on both sides now. The good thing about craft fur is you can use markers to give it colors as well. So if you want to, create a work of art. And remember, never glue eyes on this fly since it smashes the head and ruins the action. Here is our fly in all its glory. It's got a nice 360 degree profile and darts back and forth with the flash going and fibers flaring. Well, there's another fly in the books. In a future video or two, we'll go over hollow tying with bucktail, so if you're interested in this and other patterns, tips, and fishing, we'd love it if you subscribed. Also, don't forget that you can find the materials for this guy on our site to flyfish.com. Thanks again!